You know, it's really hard to start a new episode every time. I don't know. Maybe it's just me, but um, no matter how many times I say hi, I feel so stupid in the introduction. Anyway, hey, this is the Inspire Podcast, and I am Kamiko, and today is Wednesday, November 28th, 2018, and it is cold and snowy, and I am in southwestern Ontario, Canada. I am an American living in Canada um, with my husband and our daughter, because that's where he's from, and our two cats. They are also from Canada. <laughs> um, <laughs> wow. This is episode 21, and it is a show like every other episode, but can I say, I'm here to talk to you about knitting, and you probably know that because that's probably why you're here. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, this is a, a knitting podcast. I have a few things to share with you because in my last episode I didn't get to share everything that I had recorded, and if you if you watch the last episode you'll know that it was I had to record it three times, and I wanted to make it a quick one, so I didn't show as much as I wanted to last time, but this time I'm hoping I will be able to show everything that I actually... <laughs> I will show as much as I can. Um, I have the time to do a podcast right now, so I kind of scrambled to get all my stuff together, and I'm so disorganized. Today is one of those days that I'm so disorganized that I couldn't find a couple of the things that I wanted to share with you, and I'm really sorry about that, but you don't even know, so it doesn't ma matter. I think I have plenty of content for you today. But yeah, I am so disorganized that when I was getting all this stuff together, I took the camera out, which was right next to the um, where I sit, and then I couldn't find it. And it was right there. It just, I'm so disorganized. Like, I'm a little overwhelmed right now, and I think I just need to put everything in the middle of the floor and sort it out. But I don't think I'm going to have time to do that today before my daughter gets home from school. And that could be crazy to do it while she's here because she's four and a half, and they get into everything at that age. She, she would, it's cute. She would just be curious about everything. Anyway. I'm just rambling right now. If you are a returning viewer, thank you so much for coming back. It's awesome that you are here again. And if you're a new viewer, then welcome. And I hope you haven't watched any of my other episodes, but basically this is what you get. So um, I did have something that, this was a mystery knit along back in October of last year. And it is the Road to Rhinebeck Shawl by Mina Phillip of the Knitting Expat Podcast. And it was a mystery knit along leading up to Rhinebeck. And so this is her, the shawl, and I did finish it, I, even after I ripped it out once, being almost halfway done with it. But I'm so happy with how it turned out. It does need to be blocked. I cannot tell you what the yarn is, because I don't remember. Um, but this is how it turned out, and it's a, I believe it's a semi, a crescent? Oh, oh my goodness, I don't even know what the shape is. But it is absolutely gorgeous. There's so much texture in it and I love it. It's supposed to be very, um, a lot more contrasted, but I, th and yeah. Oh, okay. I thought I was showing you the wrong side. <laughs> um, there's supposed to be more contrast in it, but I do like the way it came out I, on camera. It's, it looks pretty good. Um, it's translating really well and I just love the way the colors turned out. Um, Am I showing it to you backwards? No, I showed it to you the right way. But yeah, it is so cute. I would definitely knit this again. Um, I don't have any other of her patterns except like a free sock pattern, I think. I haven't purchased any of them, but I do I do plan on buying stuff from her because she's an amazing designer. But I've heard other people say that she, the way she writes the pattern out for you, it's very clear and concise. And I would have to say that I agree even with this pattern. So I'm I'm sure that across the board all her patterns are like that. They're very um, clear. And ooh, this actually looks good, I think. Probably messed up my hair in the back, but whatever. Um, it's a little cold in here too, so I think I might wear that. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I'm really happy with the way this turned out, and I would definitely knit it again. And it's it's in a DK way, and again, I'm sorry, I don't know the yarn. It's actually a wool acrylic blend, I believe. And the thing that took me so long to, to finish was that I did decide to do the an I-cord bind off, and I'm sorry I'm playing with my hair. I'm very self-conscious about my hair. Um, I did an I-cord bind off, and this is the first time I've done an applied I-cord, but I haven't done an, an I-cord bind off. Um, and I'm not sure, does it use more yarn than a regular bind off? 
maybe you know that, but I ended up having like this much left of it to knit and I ran out of yarn. Um, and I had to buy more, which really sucked because I didn't know what I was going to do. I didn't want to rip it all out and just do a regular bind off because I really liked the contrast. Um, and I liked the, that it was an I-cord bind off. I liked, I liked the way it looks. So yeah, I just ended up buying more of that yarn. Um, but yeah, so that's this and I'm so happy with it. I, I love it so much. So another, um, past finished object that I don't know if I ever shared with you as a finished object, but I pulled it out last night cause I was really cold is the Mara shawl. And I can't remember who it's by. And again, I don't know the name of the yarn, but I, I'm pretty sure it's the same company that made that, um, sells this yarn. I love this shawl. It is so pretty. It was a like garter stitch heaven or hell. I'm not sure, but this is what it looks like. I like the way the bottom, this doing this ribbing was a pain in the A. It was awful, but it looks amazing. It looks really good. I love the way, I love the way it, it drapes. It's so pretty. And this yarn is so nice cause it's got, it looks purple, but there's like a lot of little specks of blue in it. I don't know if you can see that. My lighting again sucks. As always, I have a terrible setup, but someday maybe I won't. But yeah, so I wanted to share that with you because I wasn't sure if I had ever shared it with you before and it's very squishy and warm and I love it. Um, I would love to give these thing, these shawls to people, but I want them. <laughs> but I can think of so many people that I would love to just share these with. Um, yeah, so those are a couple of finished objects. I did talk about, I think in the, during the summer that I, or I've said it in the past. Yeah, I think I've said it in the past that I didn't know how to do brioche and this summer I tackled it and I taught myself, well, I guess I went on, I went on YouTube because I always thought it was a very scary thing to do. And I was like, I can't do that. I'm not going to be able to do it. I won't get it. Cause it just seemed like this crazy, um, just out of the realm of possibility. But I tried it and I was very um, pleased with how easy it was. Um, and these, I used these two yarns and it's actually just a sample project. Okay, I'll just tell you the yarns first. These are by Sugarbush and I believe it's a local yarn company, I think. And I don't know the actual content, but they're super soft. Um, I don't know if they're 100%. I have no idea. I'm so sorry. I've shared these with you before while they were still in the skeins, but this is like a, an aubergine color. I don't know if it's coming across true to color on camera. It doesn't look like it is on my screen. It looks like it's black, but it's not. It's like a nice deep aubergine. And then there's this mauve color, I guess you'd call it. Yeah. They're really, they're really pretty. But, um, so I, I practiced the brioche and I don't remember the pattern. I can't even finish this. So basically it's just a sample, which is totally fine because I'm just going to jump head first into a, um, into some pattern that I find online. If you have any suggestions for a lovely brioche pattern, um, let me know. It's something that's not too crazy hard. Um, but yeah, so I did it just to show you that I actually did it. <laughs> I did that. And the other side is that. So I was really happy with the way that came out, even though I don't even know what the pattern is. <laughs> um, I think it was a cowl of sorts and that's probably what I'm looking for as far as a pattern goes is, uh, is a cowl. So that's that. So I learned brioche. <laughs> Yay me. And I'm going to, going to actually insert a picture here, I think of the sweater I, I showed you last time, the flax light sweater by Tin Can Knits that I was knitting for my daughter. She's four, my youngest daughter. And, um, it, yeah, I finished it. It was the, the yarn, the yellow yarn was Leo and Roxy. And I know the color colorway was pollen and it was on a single, a merino single, I believe. And then the contrasting color was actually yarn that I dyed. I was very happy with it <laughs> and I love the contrast on it and it's really soft. I would totally wear it. Um, but I thought 
uh, well, my daughter wanted a sweater, and I wanted to knit her one. So she tried it on, and it fits her. The, the waist is a little tight on the bind off, which I was really surprised with. I really don't like it, but she's probably never going to wear it because she tried it on and she said, I don't like the way it feels. And it's not even itchy, so I think she needs just like a, a little t-shirt to wear underneath it um, so that she can't feel that right on her skin. So it is soft, but I think it's just a tad too itchy for her, even though it's soft, if you know what I mean. Um, so I'm never knitting her a sweater again. <laughs> That's not true. No, it's just, I can handle if it's not like a hundred percent, um, super, super soft on my skin. Although I would wear a tank top underneath it anyway, probably. Um, anyway, I finished that. It came out really cute. It's adorable. And when I posted it on, on Instagram as a work in progress, Obviously, I tagged Leo and Roxy, and they shared it on their story, so I thought that was really cool to see that shared. Um, I'm really sorry. My voice is scratchy, and I'm losing it, and I don't know why. Um, so I think that is it as far as some stuff I've been working on lately, or finished lately, or just stuff I... Nope, just stuff I wanted to share. Because I am working on some other things, but I'm kind of keeping that on the down low right now. <laughs> But what I, I am doing a test knit for Mallory of Knit and Kitten, the Knit and Kitten podcast, and on Instagram and all over across the board, she is uh, just a dose of love, and I've actually gotten to know her pretty well lately. We've talked back and forth, and um, she's doing. She did a test knit for me, and I think she's doing one right now. I don't even know. Um, but anyway, I decided I wanted to do a test knit for her, and. I'm not going to say, she said I could share it, I'm not going to say the name of it yet until it's the, the pattern is released, um, but it's got a pattern on the front. This yarn is, I believe it's Malabrigo. I did share the skein, did I share it a couple of weeks, or a couple of podcasts ago? I'm not sure. I don't know the, I don't know exactly the, whose yarn it is, but I will put that on the screen. Anyway, it's this, and it's hard to see the pattern, and there's only a pattern only on the front, and the back is plain stock in that, which I love. Um, I could have chosen a less busy yarn, but the pattern will block out, um, I believe. I think it'll look good once it's blocked out, and you'll be able to see it, but it's just like this wavy, not wavy, it's, I don't even know how to explain it, but it's like leafy almost. But I don't think that's what I want to call it. Sorry, Mallory, if um, I'm doing it injustice. But it's a beautiful sock. Um, the pattern is great. It's very easy to follow, but enough to keep your interest. Um, so it's not a plain sock. But it's easy enough where you can like watch a show and just like glance down at the chart. So I wish I could. I wish it was coming out. Let's see if I can. I wish it was coming out a little bit more like you could see it but trust me the pattern's beautiful I'll definitely re-knit it or knit it again after I do the test knit and do it in a, so a more solid or a tonal color but that is that so that's my current work in progress among many others but you know you know how that goes and when I I did if you watched my vlogs my vlogtober um, you'll know that I went to the Woodstock Fiber Festival this past um, September. Was it in September? October. I think it was October. And I want, I got some, I shared all the yarns that, uh, I can't even talk, I'm so sorry. I shared all the yarn, my haul, I, sh I shared that on my Vlogtober, um, one of the Vlogtobers. And I'm with this yarn, it's Cascade. I'm so happy with this yarn. It was such a good price at one of the booths. It's Cascade Yarns, Cascade 220. Anyway, it's all of these colors, and I think you actually, I think I actually got one more color than I needed. Let me just get them so that you can actually see them. But they're all Cascade 220, and that yeah, that lime green is not as bright. Actually, it is, but it. It's okay. It, it looks good. I do like the way it looks with these other colors. Um, they're very autumn-y colors, I think, but 
I with these I'm going to make the Ohm shawl by Andrea Maori and I but that one is more like a blanket shawl type thing and you can wear it so many different ways and for so many different occasions and stuff so I'm really excited to make that um, but I'm not going to cast it on until I get a until I have a few more items off the needles speaking of that did I share this last time I was talking about knitting short socks and this is a pair I think this is opal yarn but I don't remember because I think the the ball band got lost somewhere along the shuffle of our move and everything and it's a very um, rough, rustic, very rustic yarn, but it's knitting up really cool. Um, so that's a short sock. That's the, the top of it. And I'm almost done. I'm just decreasing the heel right now. But I love the way that looks, and I'm loving the short socks. Um, this is actually my knitting that I can take um, with me, just grab and go. So I'm not working on it much at home. And I haven't been out much lately either, so I haven't really worked on it. But that's fine. I'm not really... It's more about the um, the process of knitting this one, just having something to do when I want when I need mindless knitting. And I haven't even started the second one yet. So that's, that's just something that's happening right now. Um, but that'll be off the needles. I have the Jelly Roll socks. I have the How Cold Is It mittens. I have um, a sweater that I'm going to start for myself. <laughs> but I'll probably work on that as well as as the ohm shawl together and just pick them up because I can't just have one thing to knit. I don't, I really have a terrible attention span and I get really bored, which I'm sure a lot of you can relate to. I, sorry, I dyed up, and if you, if you follow my Instagram, you'll see that I posted this already, but I dyed up, um, some yarn for myself and I'm going to make, it's called, which one is it? It, yes, okay, it's the TPCT, and I believe it stands for the Perfect Crop Top Sweater, and I forget who it's by, so I'll try to put it on the screen, <laughs> um, but I really, really want to make that, and I want to get it done pretty quick, and I think it's like a size 4 needle, so a US size 4 needle, so I think that'll go really fast, but I made this yarn, well, I didn't make the yarn, I dyed this yarn, and I have two skeins of it that are, are like over 100 grams each, I believe, maybe 150 grams each. So it's a ton of yarn. I just wanted to make sure I had enough yardage. Um, so two of these, love it. It's exactly what I wanted. Um, like, oh, and this, the one that's still in a skein is this one. And it's funny, this one actually got some blues and oranges in it. <laughs> I thought that was really kind of funny. I don't know what happened there. But that's fine. But this is exactly what I was hoping for, this this color for the sweater, and I think it will look so cute. So if you look up that pattern, TPCT, by... I forget who it is. Um, it's really cute. So, so I will be casting that on pretty soon. Um, and then I have a story, a fun little story, about some needles. I thought you might like this story. So basically, this is my... These are my needles. If you like my bag? This is. These are also my um, project bags. I always think of the Mean Girls because they have the Ziploc bags for their project bags. And yeah, it might look a little cheesy and stuff, but when you have a project in a bag like this, um, you can see your project, and you're more likely to grab it and work on it. It, it. And if it's in a bag that you can't see, unless you know exactly what's in that bag, you probably don't if you're like me. And it's kind of like out of sight, out of mind. Is that the saying? You kind of forget what's in there. Um, but this, you can see exactly what's in there. And I happen to also use it for my needles. And also I don't have many, very many project bags. And I have more projects than bags. So, um, but yeah, these are my needles. Um, not obviously not all of them, but these are my circulars. And then I have like a little needle case for my double pointed and stuff. But um, if you've watched me... If you know, in the past, I've talked about my knitting journey, which I, maybe I'll, I'll redo a, I'll do a video again about, like, kind of as a refresher for any new people, but I've been knitting for, like, a hundred years, and, um, when I started, I had no idea, I, I didn't want to spend a lot of money, I didn't really understand the value of having quality needles, so, and I, I thought stuff was really expensive at that point, I didn't, have a hobby like that before. Um, 
where the items were, sometimes they were kind of expensive. Um, and I was just very conscientious of how much money I was spending anyway. But I would buy a lot of the bamboo needles that you would get at like Joanne's or Michael's. And I, and side point, we have Michael's here in Canada, but we don't have the Joanne, Joanne's, Joanne fabric. I really wish we did because I used to love going in that store because they did have different yarns than Michael's um, and different items and stuff. Plus they had the fabrics and stuff. Um, but I, I barely ever buy yarn at Michael's anyway, anymore. Anyway, back on track. Um, yeah, so I used to buy the bamboo needles and um, then I kind of like through my knitting journey I worked up to metal needles, but they were like cheaper quality that you could buy at Joanne or Michael's and um, I'm losing my train of thought. I am so sorry. <laughs> the, um, so in the past couple of years, I've like real, I've been trying out different kinds of needles. Um, I've wanted an interchangeable set for the longest time, but they're very expensive to me. Um, and I didn't want to spend that kind of money without knowing exactly how much I like them or trying them out. Um, and there aren't a lot of like local yarn stores around or any that I was super impressed with that I really wanted to spend time and ask about their needles, which are always like <laughs> under lock and key apparently. Anyway, I wasn't really sure. So I've asked online and I've tried Addy Turbo. I've tried the Try It set from Knit Picks. I've tried the Caspians. I've tried Knit Pro, a couple of different kind of Knit Pros. I've tried Chiaogu's. Um, is, is that it? That's all I can think of right now. Um, and they're all metal needles, so I, I know I prefer the metal nickel plated nickel needles, I think. I know I, I prefer that. And then um, I had someone suggest to get the Chiaogu set Inter of interchangeable needles um, because I really wanted to get a set of interchangeable needles. This is where I'm going. This is my story. <laughs> and um, so I was like, you know what? I'm just going to do it. I, I ran it by my husband. Not that I have to. He doesn't care. He, um, he has, if he knew what to get, he would get it. So he has, he has no problem with me doing that. It's me spending the money and not wanting to spend that kind of money because, you know, it's a, it's an investment. It really is. I think a lot of people who don't knit wouldn't be like, that's insane. Those are just needles. So anyway, I decided to get the Chiagu set and I found on a very large website that you can have a membership to, um, you know what I'm talking about, but I'm not going to name any names. I found a Chiagu complete set for a really good price in Canadian dollars. <laughs> So I was like, oh, I have to get that. So it was size US, sizes US 2 up to 15, I believe. And it was under $200, like ridiculous. Um, so I put it in my cart, but I did not check out because I was still like having a hard time thinking about spending that kind of money. And I was having a bad night one night and my husband um, was right near me or something. We were in the same room. And I was having a bad night. Something had happened and I was feeling very bad about myself and about life in general. And he shouts back to me, he, he was on his computer, he's like, uh, could you put X amount of money on the credit card? Cause I just bought you your needles. And I was like, oh, that's awesome. I was so excited. Um, unfortunately it was not under the two day free shipping that they, that you can have, that you have, if you have the membership, if, because I couldn't find it under the membership. You know what I'm talking about. I couldn't find those needles under that membership. So I was going to have to wait like three weeks, but usually stuff gets delivered a little bit earlier, but I didn't care. I was like, all right, I've waited this long. I'm going to get my needles. So I'm super, super, super excited. I was so excited. And, um, I waited and waited and waited and waited and waited and waited. And then the day came that they were supposed to arrive and they never arrived. So I immediately contacted the company because I was like, I want my needles. I've waited this long and usually you get them a little bit earlier anyway. We never have problems with shipping. And um, they, I, I contacted the manufacturer, I con contacted the online store and they contacted the manufacturer or the, the, the company and oh, a bug just flew by, like a ladybug just flew by and it scared me. Um, and there's two ladybugs. 
hate ladybugs. Um, yeah, so I didn't hear anything from the, um, the company that was, not the online company, but the other, the ones who are actually sending me the needles. Um, couldn't, they never got back to me. The on, the big online company that you have a membership to decided that the best route was to just reimburse me my money. And I was so, so disappointed, like so disappointed after waiting a couple of years, trying out different needles and then finally, finally deciding on the ones that I wanted and then waiting another three weeks. I think it was actually like 24 days. I was so disappointed to the point of not tears, but I was very disappointed. Then about, so whatever, I was like, well, maybe they'll still show up before I get my refund and that would be awesome. Never showed up. Nothing ever happened with it. I got my refund and I was like, all right, well, that's that. So I, I kind of like looked at around online at some stores nearby and somebody did have them, but it took them a while to get back to me. And then they still haven't gotten back to me about ordering them. And in the meantime, I went on to um, Amazon <laughs> and found some on the Prime membership, Amazon Prime, and purchased a Chiagu set of small needles. So it's only used US sizes two through eight. So I was like, you know what? Those are the sizes I need the most. It had, um, it came with three different size cables and like a couple of little accessories and US sizes two through eight and a little container, like a, a little thing to put them in, a little, a little zipper pouch that they, they come in. So I ordered that and that was, I ordered it on, I think on a Tuesday and it, it said it would be here by Friday. And I was, excuse me, and I was really hoping that it would come like Thursday instead because sometimes we do get deliveries early here. And Friday comes, that Friday, I think this was a couple of weeks ago, that Friday came and went and no needles, even though it said they were out for delivery. They And I called up Amazon and they tried to, they're awesome. They have the best customer service, Amazon. I love them. They worked with me. I was on the phone for like a half an hour. They contacted the postal company or the Canada Post and they, Canada Post said, oh, we just, you know, you meet the cutoff, you met the cutoff and we can't deliver today. You, you're not going to get them today because we had, we could only deliver so many things. And the funny thing is the, I saw the, the mail truck go or the mail car, or whatever it is, go right by the house and deliver regular mail. So I don't know why they didn't get delivered. I, this, at this point I was almost going to cry. I was about to cry. I was so upset because it was Friday and I wouldn't get them till Monday and I was actually going to be away on Monday. So I wouldn't get them till Tuesday. So anyway, got them Monday night. Sorry, the story is so long. Got them Monday night and um, even then they had been delivered, but I, we hadn't been told that they got delivered. So um, yeah, I had to go search for them, which I wasn't very happy about, but I got them. <laughs> long story short, really long story. I am so sorry. I did get them. And then... I, I was very, very excited and I must sound like such a spoiled brat and I'm really not, but all that, ho all those hopes and expectations and this is what I get, which is fine. It's what I expected. It's U U.S. sizes two through eight, but then the these are mocking me because it's U.S. 9, 10, 10.5, 11, 13, and 15. It's just mocking me because I don't have the complete set. So... You know, I'll buy them eventually. I love the needles. I'm very happy with them. Um, they're, this is the size eight, five millimeter. They're very, they're pointy enough, but not too sharp. Um, they're lightweight. I'm, I'm really happy with them. They came with three different size cables. I will get a shorter cable because I didn't really think of it, but I got this, the five inch needles. And if I had been able to play around with them in a store, I would have gotten four inch needles. Um, but it comes with a row counter, no, um, the gauge, this, the gauge, um, measure thingy. And I don't have it on me right now. It came with, um, some stitch markers, which I haven't used yet. It has two T pins to tighten and loosen. And then a couple of, 
um, stoppers to put on the ends of your cable if you if you change your needles to something else. But I have used these nonstop. You know, the and I'm not disappointed. Um, so don't you know? Don't think I'm like really spoiled or anything. Um, but in a way, I was a little bit let down because you know, I, I wish I had more cables. I wish I had the nine through fifteen. But the sizes I use the most are two through eight. So that has actually been great because there's been a few projects I've been working on that I've needed to switch between six and eight, um, some hats and stuff that I've been making. So anyway, there's my story. It was very, very sad and very, very long winded. Now my throat hurts even more. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I wish I could edit that, but I don't think I can. Um, so that is the drama of the needles and nobody else will understand it. And this is why I'm telling you guys, because I know that you understand this. Um, my cats are doing that thing where they go like that to each other and they're super lazy and yeah anyway so um let me just see they're, they're both going back and forth but like super lazy oh my goodness so I wanted to share a couple of the podcasters with you some new to me because I had never tried them out they weren't that it wasn't that I hadn't ever heard of them before but um I had never watched them before, and I finally had caught up on other podcasters, and I finally got to watch them, the, these podcasters. Um, so yeah, Podcast Love, Shauna from Adelaide Cottage. I binge-watched all her episodes, and she is just the sweetest, most soft-spoken little thing. She's so creative. She's so talented. She has... She... Um, does so many different crafts. She's very crafty and um, she's super, super sweet. And she follows me on Instagram. I was like, that's crazy. So, you know, she's a, a lot of people have talked about her and a lot of people know her. So I felt kind of honored that she was following me. So you've probably already checked her out, but if you haven't, which I doubt it, then go check her out. She's awesome. And also David from Dog Dare, the Dog Dare podcast. Um, he also follows me. I don't know why. I don't know how. Um, but he is awesome. He, um, he lends a, a, something to the knitting community. Just, he's, he's very, he's great. I cannot even say enough words about him. He, there need to be more people like him in the world. He is so sweet and kind hearted. And I just... I enjoy him so much. He's so humble and he's just great. And I did send him a message because I had to tell him how much, how wonderful I thought he was. Like, who doesn't want to hear that about themselves? And he was like, oh, thank you. He, he messaged me back. And I was like, that's crazy. So that was exciting. <laughs> um, so check him out if you haven't, but you probably already have. He's so interesting too. He just has really cool stories. And he doesn't share a lot of knitting excuse me, but his po it's still a knitting podcast and it's very interesting and he's very creative. He does some really cool things. Um, the Woolen Homestead, they're awesome. You've probably already watched them too and they dye yarn. So they're, they're great. I love that. It's a husband and wife, um, Tiffany and Ethan. They are awesome. As always, the Mean Girl Knit. Mean Girls Mean Girls Knit. I love them. Um, definitely check them out, but you probably already have. <laughs> Who else? Um, oh, and Inside Number 23, uh, Katie from Inside Number 23. Everybody knows her, too. She's awesome, and she... I, I like that she does, like, her and her husband do um, book reviews or movie reviews too, and the way they, the, she by herself and them together, they're very um, well spoken. Like they, she'll share why she likes a pattern, why she doesn't like a pattern, what she likes it about it, what she doesn't like about it, um, the reasons why she would or wouldn't do it again. She's just, she gives you the whole story. And, but she's so well spoken. She's like a professional. She's she's great, and she's so sweet and caring, and um, very talented. And she does make me want to sew, but I won't. <laughs> but she makes me want to. I might dabble in sewing and try to sew some stuff for my daughter. Um, so you've probably already, already watched her too. I'm just sharing these people because I think they're wonderful, and they. Um, 
they're like right at my fingertips. I can, I can message them if I want to, not that they care, but it's, it's just that knitting community thing. You know what I'm talking about? Um, it's just a really great community. These are people that get to share their talents with, um, with everybody else who shares the same passion. And I really, really appreciate that. Um, it's actually really hard for me because I used to have people that I knit with when I lived in the States and I haven't been able to get that same kind of thing here. And, um, to have these people to watch and not just those podcasters, there are so many that I've, that I watch too, so many others that I watch too. And it's just like, they're sharing something that I completely love. That is a huge part of my life. And even though they don't know me and I can't like directly talk to them and they can't talk to me, um, it's still really nice. And I feel like I, I get a little bit of my, my group back kind of. So it's, it's a very, um. I am not very well spoken on the other hand. It's a very um, good good community for me to be a part of. Um, and then, hello, Henry wants to say hi. If you follow me on Instagram, you know that he is a big part of my Instagram. I love this guy. He's the biggest boy ever. He's just the best man of mans. I love this guy. He's so dopey too. Super lazy. He's mama's boy, yeah. He owns me. Um, okay, and TV shows or movies. I wanted to see this movie when it came out last year, but we never got to the movies um, to see it, to the theater. But we finally watched it a couple months ago, I think. The Greatest Showman. Again, I am always late to the party, <laughs> so you've probably already seen that. If you haven't, you have to watch that, sh that movie. I did not know it was a musical. I, I wasn't really aware of that. I just knew Hugh Jackman and Zac Efron were in it and it looked really good. <laughs> um, my husband watched it too and he did know it was a musical but he watched it anyway and he loved it. We absolutely loved that movie and the soundtrack is amazing. My four-year-old has not seen the movie. She won't, she wouldn't really be interested but she loves the soundtrack and it's so cute to hear her singing it. I love it. So you have to check that movie out. The Greatest Showman. Um, as far as TV shows, um, I've I actually, because everybody talks about the Gilmore, Gilmore Girls, and I never watched it. I finally watched it, and I'm still, I'm still in like only in like season four or something, and it's really cute. It is really cute. I love the mother daughter friendship, um, although the dynamic between them is a little strange to me. Like the mom is a, a real Yahoo, and the daughter is like the parent, and I don't necessarily like that. But <laughs> and the the acting is not that great, but. You know, it's a cute, comfortable show. I like it. Um, and it just, yeah, it's the mother-daughter thing. I'm very um, partial to that. Um, I used to watch The Office. Uh, I never watched the very last season, but besides that, I was a diehard Office fan. And I fi I started re-watching the entire series, so I think I'm in, like, episode four or five of that also. And I, I love, love, love that show. And, um, so it's fun just to rewatch that because I've seen every episode except the last season, so, but I don't remember a lot of it. So it's so much fun to watch. And like Steve Carell is just a real jerk. <laughs> He's such an ass, but, um, but it's so fun and uh, Dwight and just everybody. It's a great show. Um, we also watched, well, separately, but my husband and I watched The Haunting of Hill House. Is that the name of it? And, oh yeah, great show. Creepy and disturbing more than scary. There was just one part that was scary to me. Everything else was just creepy and disturbing, um, but it was a good show. And I didn't. it didn't leave me really, like, freaked out or anything, which is, maybe that's weird that I wasn't freaked out. I don't know, but that was a good show, too. Um, what else? Oh, and of course, like, Grey's Anatomy... American Horror Story, that comp I think that finished the last, I think they, they did show the last episode of it, so I actually rewatched the entire series of American Horror Story, because before the new season this year, um, because I wanted to just see all of it again and see how everything tied together, so um, I really liked the last, this past season of it, uh, I thought I thought they did a really good job kind of bringing back another season, and um, yeah, so, what else? 
I think that's it. But I have talked enough and I hope it was entertaining enough. And I really appreciate you coming over to my channel and see me, watching me talk to a camera. And at least, you know, maybe a couple people will watch. I don't know. <laughs> but um, I do have a, my series of socks coming out soon. The, the third one is being tested and the fourth one I actually have to knit up, but I know the pattern. Um, I think I talked about that in the last episode. I just still haven't knit it yet, and I will be um, looking for test knitters soon for that. But I will. I wanted to release all four of the patterns at the same time instead of one, because they're out of order the way they're being tested. So, um, yeah, there's that. So, yeah, thanks for watching, and I'm going to leave you here.